just had it made yesterday. All right. So Danny White for president in what, 2020? For what? Danny White for president in 2020? In 2020. Well, okay. maybe 2024. Okay. All right. and everything. All right, here we go. All right, there we go. There we go. We're good. We're good. We'll get selfies later. All right. Welcome to the 2018 college football season. How good's that sound, huh? Who was in Atlanta with us in January? Who wants to go back to one of those bowls again? Who wants to go to one of those semifinals? Yeah. All right, we got a great program tonight. We thank you so much for coming down here. I'm going to ask you if you can, a big round of applause for the people here at Wall Street Plaza. Please give them a round of applause. Yeah. Uh, the folks at Hooch and Shine, they are your official young alumni watch parties. I don't know how young you have to be, but that's where you can watch it. You see a football game for watch parties this year. Couple of quick things. We've got our alumni tent right here. See our great folks there waving? Please visit them. They've got giveaways if you have not registered for that. We have our ticket tent in the back there, which is also where you can register for prizes as well. We're giving away jerseys, all sorts of cool stuff. I didn't get season tickets. At our 96 9 the game tent right there, register. We're giving away a pair of season tickets for football this season, all right? So you can stop by there and do that. Who doesn't have season tickets for this season? No, that's not the time to put your hand up. It's a good time to lie right there. Who has season tickets? Who was there for the USF football game last year? Was that not like the greatest atmosphere ever? Who was there for the conference championship game last year? We need that every game this year. We have sold a record number of season tickets this offseason thanks to you. If you do not have tickets, you better get them. There are not many tickets left for games this season. So please make sure you get your tickets. Now Danny and I, Danny White and I, happen to be uh, very fortunate to be part of the team that brought Josh Heupel to UCF. And what I want to tell you about Josh is he's a fantastic coach. But for me, even more importantly, he's just a fantastic guy. He cares about our student athletes. He cares about them growing up. And uh, you're going to see a lot of great, great uh, outcomes from this year's uh, football team. One of the things I want to tell you, this is a new year though. This is a new team. They've got to represent again this year. And we need you to be out there to help them out. Uh, not only is a football team a great team, you heard about the rest of the student athletes. What I want to tell you is our student athletes are not only great athletes, and disciplined and they work hard and they're skilled but they're great students they have the highest academic progress rate this year in the history of the university this is the smartest group of athletes we've ever had and the football team has the highest academic progress rate in, of any team in the state of florida again the smartest group 
and they have the highest GPA, a 3.31. How many of you had a 3.31? No, let's not do that. <laughs> the highest GPA in the history of the program. So let's give those student athletes a round of applause. Now Mary and I are looking forward to supporting the team this year. Again, we're looking forward to having you come out and support the teams this year. Go Knights! Charge on! Thank you guys. That's pretty good by Heupel, I got to admit right there. When December happened last year, UCF is 12-0. Danny White had to go find a football coach. And I don't think people understand the job that Coach Heifel did when he got here in December. He had a football team trying to prepare to go unbeaten, play in a major bowl game. He had to hire a staff. He had to get a staff here, had to get out and recruit. Then he had to convince I have, you'll love him. We got a great staff. Put your hands together and welcome the head football coach at UCF, Josh Heifel. throwing money up here on the table. I'll let you talk what it's been like and, and let these folks know about our football team, which is now less than three weeks away from starting the year. Then we'll get some questions, but it's all yours. First of all, uh, just absolutely fantastic turnout. Night Nation, just so excited to be a part of what you guys are doing. First, uh, first time I got a chance to really experience uh, what this program and what the energy was all about was up in Atlanta when uh, when you guys took over the city. It was just fantastic to be a part of. Love getting a chance to watch our, our players compete and and, uh, and get after it for 60 minutes. And uh, that's what they've done since we got back in, uh, in January when they started that second semester. The challenge I said before our staff and I said before our players is as good as this program is right now today, the challenge is to make it better every single day. And since we've uh, gotten to work in January, our players have done that. We've had a fantastic uh, 10 days or, or eight practices here in training camp, and uh, everybody in our program's excited to get to work and, and get up to UConn and go play ball. Can you talk about, uh, you know, I asked you the coach of four facilities. I know you uh, address this a lot, but what's happening while your team's playing? We got locker rooms, we got new buildings coming, we got uh, uh, recovery cove coming, all sorts of stuff. How does that help your team both now and in recruiting? Well, we want to own the state. We want to own the city of Orlando. We want to own the state. And so to do that, you got to have a great coaching staff. You got to have a great university. We have those things. The last thing that you got to add, the final piece, is have great facilities uh, so that you can develop those players once they get into your program. When I was in the hiring process or the interview process, uh, Danny White and Dale Whitaker were uh, were showing some of the facilities that were going to be happening at UCF. Most universities that you're at, and, and I've been at a lot that have built a lot of facilities, they talk about something, they show you something, and about five to ten years later, you actually receive those gifts. What's amazing here is that uh, Danny is a man that's going to deliver on his word, and he delivers immediately. We have four projects going on right now. Uh, we got a nutrition center that's going to be finished before we start school. we got a new game day locker room that's going to be a great environment for our players before they head out on the field. Great recruiting cook tool. Uh, we got new players, uh, lounge and, and meeting rooms that uh, are being built and I uh, can't wait for us to break ground on Recovery Cove, which is going to be the most unique football facility in, in the entire country. Alright, who was at the spring game? Who was at the spring game? How fast was the offense in the spring game? How fast is fast, coach? We're going to go really fast here in a, in a few days. I, I know you guys are excited to see it. <laughs> Man, I'm not sure what's going on, but uh, we're, uh, we're ready. The great thing about uh, what we got inside of our program is that we got speed on the offensive and defensive side of the ball, and most importantly, you got to have players that can run, and we got that. You talk about 
McKenzie and, and, and what he's meant. Can you share about what it's been like to work with him, him working with you, and what's going to be different about him this year? Yeah, when you first get a chance to meet him, he's so laid back. Um, you know, as a leader of your program, you're kind of like, man, that guy's really chill. <laughs> and uh, what's his competitive spirit and what's his makeup uh, all about? Uh, obviously, if you're playing at an elite level like he did a year ago, uh, he's got something inside of him that's special. He has that. The great players I've been around are highly competitive. They make the 10 other guys around him, and really they drive your entire program uh, from inside the locker room. He does that. Uh, the challenge for him is that as well as he played a year ago, he is still a young quarterback. Uh, a sophomore to junior year, you can make a big jump. Everybody sees the plays that he makes out of side of the pocket. No one's more appreciative of that uh, than me because as a play caller, he's going to make you right when the, when the perfect play call wasn't there. Uh, what we've tried to do is continue to develop him inside the pocket, subtle movements, so when the plays are down the field, uh, he can deliver the ball from inside of the pocket and uh, also get his eyes in the right place. He's come a long way fundamentally, his knowledge of the game, and uh, we're excited to get out and go play with him. Coach, outside of McKenzie, we're blessed. We got so much speed. We got talented running back and wide receiver. Tell me how excited you are with that group and as you work with them and what that means for big play potential for us. Young players that have played at a high level, they've played in big games and are continuing to get better. They have a great understanding of what we're doing. We need a great push here the last half of, of training camp to, to get to where we need to before we get up into at UConn. Um, but, I mean, you're talking about Snelly, you're talking about Marlon, you're talking about Otis Anderson, you're talking about Gabe Davis, Trey Nixon. Those are all dynamic playmakers. I didn't even talk about AK and the guys we got in the backfield all the time. We got dynamic playmakers. So if we can get those guys into space, uh, they have a chance to make football uh, a lot of fun for the guys that are watching at home. Who saw any preseason football last night? What school dominated preseason football last night? Anybody see who was the leading tackler for the Seahawks last night? You don't replace guys like that, but... Yeah, don't, don't talk about the guys no. we lost. When do you replace <laughs> guys... But how do you find leaders on defense? Shaquem was important, but he's now moved down. We got guys coming back. Does that kind of emerge itself, or who do you look to for that? We lost two players that are on the all-conference team, uh, the history of the conference, you know, and, and Keem and, and, uh, and Mike Hughes. You don't just replace those guys overnight. Uh, certainly Keem's uh, leadership uh, is something that we've tried to... Uh, to uh, fulfill uh, inside of our locker room. Our players, you know, when you have a transition in January, uh, you know, they're learning, you know, how you're going to operate inside of your building, what strength and conditioning is going to be like. They're learning some new schemes and terminology. So those first, you know, 15 days out on, on the field in spring ball, they're really just trying to understand how they need to play. And they're so consumed with that that it's hard for them to take the ownership that you really want. Since we've gotten back in May, uh, our, our, our guys that we need to be great leaders have really thrust them, uh, themselves forward uh, with the ownership inside of, of our, our locker room. You know, the, when I got here in December, the one thing that everybody talked about, and I'm talking about the players when I, when I would talk with them or they come into my office, is the brotherhood and the culture that existed inside of our building. And it's our challenge as coaches to continue to give our players the ownership to cultivate that and for us to, to really become a part of it. And, and when we face adversity, and it's going to happen in the game of football, uh, it's year one for us, but we can't operate like it's year one. And we spent a lot of time working on those things, and, and I think we're in a good, good spot. All right. We got a few minutes for questions. If you got a question, stick your hand up. Don't be afraid to ask Coach Heupel a question. I'll get to you in a second. Somebody wanted me to ask you this, okay? Since Mike Hughes has moved on, who's the next guy that might get us a reservation for six in the Cabanas, right? So, so <laughs> kick return, punt return. Can you tell us a little bit about all the guys we have back there? We got a lot of competition still going on right now. Uh, punt return, the guy's got to be able to catch the ball. He's got to do it in traffic. That's first and foremost the most important thing. And then you want a dynamic playmaker. And uh, we got a bunch of, uh, of guys that uh, are back there working on it. Uh, Bam, we got uh, AK, uh, Snelly's back there. I mean, there's there's a handful of guys that are still competing for that spot and really similar at the, at the kick return position as well. All right, questions for Coach Eiffel. Go ahead, right there. Quarterback race behind McKenzie Milton, trying to find someone to be a solid backup. We got uh, McKenzie uh, a body armor suit to make sure that nothing happens to him. So, nah, uh, we got some young guys inside of our program that have competed and really grown. 
Uh, DJ Mack has, has had a good first eight days out on the grass. Uh, first scrimmage, he's light years ahead of where he finished uh, the spring game at. I uh, like what he's do doing. Uh, Quadri Jones, uh, quarterback uh, here, uh, has really had a, uh, a dynamic first eight days too, and he's got to continue to grow. All right, yes. With probably the best wide receiver for the whole nation, what's the one or two wide receivers that are this luck out to Talking about our depth at wide receiver. What do you like about our wide receivers? I, well, I like that there's a bunch of them that can play ball. You know, I think I maybe named five guys. Um, you know, outside Trey Nixon, Gabe Davis, uh, inside Otis, Marlin, Snelson. All of those guys can compete at a high level. The great thing about Otis and Marlin is they have the ability to play multiple positions. You know, running back. Uh, oh, uh, Marlon played some uh, our offset back, you know what I mean, and did some things in the backfield a year ago. The versatility of those guys is what makes it so much fun as an offensive coordinator, uh, as a offensive uh, uh, staff. You have the ability to really create some things, and, and when you're playing in up, up tempo, formation variation, motions are important. Those guys give the ability to, to do a lot of different things. All right, question. Can we go ahead? Yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, uh, scrimmage yesterday. Any comment on that? Uh, the best part of the scrimmage is there was give and take on both sides of the ball. If it's dominated by one side, you're in trouble. Uh, I thought our defense did a great job of playing on the other side of the line of scrimmage. Uh, they, uh, they created some negative plays. Did a good job with pressures. Um, uh, I thought uh, running the football offensive line did a good job. Uh, getting Kubliable back at tight end has been really good for us. I thought he had a really good scrimmage, so that will be important to us with uh, 11 personnel, one tight end on the field. Anybody else? Got a couple more questions. Go. Hey, I love all the stuff you're doing, like taking the Sea World, doing the slip and slide. Do you see that paying off in the locker room? Are they buying in? Are they becoming brothers because Talking of that? Talking about brotherhood, team went to Sea World, all the other special events. You believe in that, yeah. Well, it's absolutely critical. It's, you know, ultimately, uh, when you have a championship season, there's a culture inside of the locker room and an accountability in there that really separates, you know, a good year from a great year. Uh, with us being in year one, I said it earlier tonight, and we say it with our players, adversity is going to strike. It can't be year, for, year one for us when it does. Uh, since December, our staff has put a, a ton of time and energy being around our players, eating breakfast with them, eating uh, lunch with them every single day uh, during uh, February and March during spring ball until they got on the road recruiting in April. Uh, we were in the weight room with them. Uh, obviously, we're doing the football stuff, getting them up to speed. But then I think, you know, doing unique things, and that's the great thing about this program, is that you live in a city that 68 million people want to come vacation at, and you're able to do some unique uh, experiences. And so, uh, you know, whether it's you know going to the Pro Bowl, whether it's going to a Magic basketball game, whether it's SeaWorld, uh, whether it's having dinner over at your, your uh, position coach's house, or, or going over with, you know, you're an offensive uh, lineman going over and eating with uh, Randy Shannon, uh, what we call a crossover dinner. All of those experiences create a culture where everybody, 110 guys inside of the building are all fighting together, and that's what it's got to be when we go play up in, uh, in Connecticut. All right, anybody else? Question? Yes, sir? we got a lot of speed guys at running back. What about when we get on the one-yard line, got a punch in the end zone, we feel like we got power. Running back. We're going to go real fast, and, and we're going to get that ball inside the uh, inside the end zone. All right, first of all, on the one-yard line. Um, when the clock stops, whether it's short, third and short or whether uh, you're on the goal line, um, we'll be ready to go punch that ball in. Uh, Taj McGowan, big back, uh, has had a great camp. Had maybe as good a summer as anybody we've had inside of our program. Dramatically changed his body. You can see the speed difference, um, but just physically the way he's able to compete for an entire practice is different as well. Um, but uh, we'll have a package. We'll be ready to pound it. All right, a couple more. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Starts in the trenches. Trenches. Talk about the Lions, coach. In the trenches. Let's get the big boys some pub, right? That's what I'm talking about. Uh, Got to continue to depth, uh, to build depth on both sides of the line of scrimmage. Uh, that's going to be critical to our success. Replacing a guy that you know brought pressure off the edge defensively, and Shaquem is, is critical. Um, you know, Titus Davis has had a really good camp, had a great offseason. He's going to be critical in, in us doing that. I think interiorly, uh, Tristan Hill's a guy that's had a great camp. 
Um, you know, there's four guys that are kind of entrenched in, in that role inside. Uh, being able to roll those guys but play on the other side of the line of scrimmage is going to be uh, really important to us. Uh, offensive line-wise, having Hoodie back and having him really pretty healthy. Uh, he's a different player right now than he was in spring. Uh, that's important to us. Uh, the junior college transfers uh, continuing to, uh, I'm talking about offensive tackles, uh, con continuing their development uh, will be uh, critical to our success too as we go forward. All right, anybody else? Yes, sir. What does McKenzie need to do for the Heisman? Have a season like last year? <laughs> Got to go win ball games. I think it's fantastic for uh, for the fans, for the community, uh, for everyone involved with our program. That uh, all the publicity that all of our players are receiving. Uh, it's not just McKenzie. That's a special award. Uh, but you name it, we got a guy on a list. You know, uh, whether it's the Jim Thorpe. Um, you know, the Ray Guy Award, whatever it is, we got a guy on the list. At the end of the day, you got to go out and perform at a high level. You got to handle your business every single week. And uh, the most important thing that our players can do is uh, appreciate and bring forward all the lessons that they, they've learned from the previous year or the previous couple of years. Uh, but at the end of the day, focus on today. And you got to go 1 and 0 every single day. That's been our mantra. And uh, that's the way we got to approach the season. Before I let you go, I, don't, I think you may have some assistance here tonight. Can you just comment a little bit about your staff? Uh, for those that may not know, and uh, I know you're proud that you know some of these guys that recruited Florida, just to uh, let folks know what a great staff we've got. Every single coach has an area inside the state of Florida. Uh, we've touched every school. Uh, it's important for us that we own the state. Uh, we got great talent. This is the largest university and one of the top three fastest growing cities in America. Uh, no kid needs to leave the state here. They need to stay here, play at home, and go win championships and get a great degree at the same time. Uh, Randy Shannon has uh, been up and down this state. Uh, does a great job down in South Florida, but recruit, recruits the entire state extremely well. Um, just as important is he's got great football knowledge. We're going to be as aggressive and as fast as we played on the offensive side of the ball. I really want to pair that with the same mentality and attitude on the defensive side of the ball. He brings that. And uh, most importantly, uh, he's a great mentor to kids. And, and as our players on that side of the ball have gotten a chance to know him, uh, they bought into to what he's all about and what we're about as a program. Willie Martinez, guy that was here in the, in the, uh, in the 90s, was a coordinator up at Georgia, was with me at Oklahoma, does a fantastic job in the secondary. Uh, Corey Bell is, uh, is from South Florida, does a great job with the corners. We got a great staff, we got great recruiters, uh, we got guys that are investing in young people and that will pay off in the long run. Round of applause, UCFA football coach, Josh Heifel. Thank you, coach. Okay, who registered to win a prize? Who wants to win a prize? Who's about to get disappointed? Stop, stop. Okay, gift basket. The gift basket is over at our alumni table, right? Yeah, we good? He's not afraid to take gambles. He's not afraid to tell anybody that we're the best university out there. We've got everything going for us. A great athletic department. He hired an outstanding football coach. He's got facilities popping up all over the place. He is spreading the brand of UCF across Central Florida, the state, the region, and across the country and even beyond. And there's even bigger and better things coming to the horizon. Put your hands together. Welcome Vice President, Director of Athletics, Danny White. Let's give it up for Mark Daniels. That does a heck of a job. All right, y'all. So I told my new boss, President Whitaker, he just heard for, from, who's going to be big time for UCF. I told him the crowd was going to be awesome tonight. You guys are going to have tons of energy, and we got the best fans in college athletics. So don't make, don't make me look stupid right now. Go Knights! Awesome! Awesome! Last year was awesome. I think we, we, we set a lot of milestones. We got this thing going in the right direction. But remember, we're just getting started. It's so appropriate. We're finishing our last Charge On Tour event right here in downtown of, uh, Orlando. We are Orlando's hometown team. I know many of you went to UCF, have family that went to UCF. That's awesome. We love our alums. But guess what? It doesn't matter. Everybody in Orlando is a knight. We represent this community on the national stage. Appreciate all your support and everything that you do. So last year we, we were one of four college athletic departments in the country. One of four in the country 
to finish every single team sport had a winning record. We, yeah, how about that one? We had won conference championships in women's soccer, conference championship in women's rowing, conference championship in football, and obviously our first of many national championships in football. Go Knights! But as President Whitaker said, that's behind us. Our, our team has been, since January, focused on 2018. We as a fan base, as a university, and as a community, we need to focus on 2018. And more so than ever before, we have more eyes on us than, than ever before. We're the only athletic department, the only school in, in America that's the preseason favorite in both football and men's basketball. Expectations are higher than they've ever been before. I remind our student athletes all the time, they, they need to be, and they are, really positive representatives of our, our university, of their university, and people are paying attention at a higher level than, than has ever happened before. But I want you guys to understand, I want you to hear this from me, it's not just the kids on the field and on the court that the eyes are on. It's not just our coaches that the eyes are on. People want to see us stumble. We're challenging college athletics nationally. We are building what will be a perennial top 25 athletic department, so they're gonna be watching our fan base. I know you guys are, are, are buying season tickets. We've sold over 8,000 season tickets. Thank you. We are 92% sold out in the stadium. It's big time. So now we need you to come and fill the stadium, because they're gonna be watching. We need you to come fill CFE Arena. Bring your neighbor, anybody in this community. Let's celebrate UCF. Let's celebrate this community on the national stage. We're gonna have a lot more nationally televised games. And like I said, people are watching. Let's make our community and our university proud with what they see. And listen guys, we went undefeated in football last year. The chances of doing that, I mean, it hadn't happened very often in the history of, of football, okay? We're going to lose a football game at some point. Let's not have our fan base be about we're only excited when everything's going just uber great, okay? Let's be diehard supporters that really build a brand. If we really build this brand the way this community is capable of, with our scale, with the fastest growing university in the fastest growing city in America, we will take over college athletics, and it's going to be a hell of a fun ride. All right, guys, I don't want to talk long. I know you guys are all having fun. I want to get out and visit with you some more. I really appreciate you coming out. Uh, we got some new exciting things in the stadium this year that I know uh, uh, will be a lot of fun. We put the north end zone field cabanas in. We've already sold those out. We're doing some loge cabanas, which is a co pretty cool experience. that will be undercover and some shade you'll see in the stadium. We've got some new concessions happening. For those of you uh, uh, Jersey freaks, we got a, some pretty cool conversation going on with Nike for the space game. That'll be fun. Uh, we're going to continue to look for new ideas to make it a, a great experience, the most unique experience in college football, uh, but we need your support. And I get it, at events like this, you guys are diehard fans. Please be ambassadors uh, in your neighborhoods, at, at your workplace. Tell everybody how much fun you're having at our games uh, as we continue to galvanize this whole community and this thing, we're so close to the tipping point. We're so close to this thing just absolutely exploding. When I say that, I mean sustained competitive success. I mean filling and selling out our stadium, our arena, every single time we play and building a national reputation that not only do we compete at the highest levels across the country in every single sport that we have, not only do we compete at the highest levels in the country in the classroom, as President Whitaker said, but our fans are as passionate as any in the country. We need you at high levels and to continue to grow this thing, all right? Thanks so much for being here. Go Knights! Thank you, Danny. Couple of quick things. Can we get a round of applause to the guys at Access that helped set everything up here tonight? They're awesome people, big supporters of the Knights. Uh, next Saturday, Fan Fest, Spectrum Stadium. 6.30, you come out, meet the football team, autograph, pictures, night fans gather, that is next Saturday, 6.30, Spectrum Stadium, come on out, get to meet the whole team, coaches, pictures, it's an awesome time, again, that's next Saturday, Fan Fest at Spectrum Stadium, uh, how many going to the kickoff luncheon next week? Sold out, awesome event at the kickoff luncheon, and uh, we look forward to seeing many of you there. Again, big thanks to folks at Wall Street Plaza tonight. Give them a round of applause tonight. Get your season tickets. 
Home opener, right around the corner. Season opener, three weeks from last night. We thank you for coming out tonight. Enjoy the rest of the Charge On Tour here tonight. Go Knights! Get on, everybody.